All right, now a lot of you uh, did kind of backwards of what you're like combusting it or something. Not really sure uh, what you got working. Uh -oh. All I'm doing is making pentane. Why is it C2? Is it, is it my C2? C2? Yeah, you're right. So I'm just putting those two together. That would generally lead me to what I need to get. Okay? Uh, you're not combusting it. There's nothing about combustion. All right? Okay, I got a little mole map there for you. All right, there we go. All right, so I got to convert this into, all right? Now, some of you forgot, got to get the six out of there, all right? So when you do that, you rid that, okay, cross off. 3.5 moles of H2, all right? So we got the moles, that's what value? What, what, is, what does it represent in the PV equals NRT? N. N. All right, so that's the N. Uh, yeah. I didn't tell you guys that. The N is number of moles. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. Do that. You know that. Do you good on that? Oh, yeah. You good on the number of moles? Okay. So PV equals NRT. Uh, I'm solving for volume. And boom, I'm going to use. Uh, 0 0.0826 divide by 981. Wait. All right, add my 273. What'd you use? Did you have to change to Well, what did I do? All right, so we're going to get. I'm getting there. 135 liters of hydrogen. I like that problem. I like that problem a lot. It's a good problem. It's a good problem right there. All right, so I think some of you started off. You did, you converted your Celsius to Kelvin, which was good. We got your moles, but some of you stopped at 42 divided by 72. Who was that? The next part, which is highly tested upon, is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. The reason it's tested upon is because they think it's very simple that it's some kind of adding or subtracting that you're going to be doing. But usually you have to find the total pressure and subtract one of the gas pressures or figure out the other ones based on the algebraic value. All right, total pressure of the gaseous mix, partial pressures um, that each gas would ex exert itself. Right. Um, other equations that are associated with this, all right, total moles in a mixture, all right, n total, n1, n2, etc. All right, the mole fraction, did that earlier um, in your summer packet. Mole fraction, we talked about that uh, one day as well. Um, this uh, all right, another good one. N of the gas over N of the total, all right? Mole fraction. Talked about mole fractions earlier this year and many different applications with that. So with that being said, give you a chance on this. They'll make up for the other one. And this is why I say they like to test Dalton's law. Find the total pressure of 38 grams of carbon monoxide and 38 grams of hydrogen in a 6.0 liter container at 25 degrees Celsius. All right. All right, so talk to your neighbor, figure out a plan. 
Unless you're just going to go and do it by yourself. I'd love to just play it out. Talk to somebody about Next part when you're done with the first part. You don't have to. Did you do them separate? Hmm. Good news is there's not a lot of theory in this. It's just straight up math. Well, I know, but could you assume there were it was split 50-50? You could do three, yeah. So there's three meters of each? Oh, oh, okay. So, okay. Have they got six meters? What? No, we just have All right, so I got those. I got that total. 
more or less. I got 8410 kilopascals if you use uh, 0 0.08206, you got a little bit of a different number. You might know what number you get. 82-ish. Divide that number by. What do you divide that number by? 101.325. All right, so if you want to just check your answer, divide that number by 101.325. All right, now, the greatest follow-up question in the history of mankind in AP chemistry is the next question. How much is exerted by each gas? All right, how would you do that? Mole percent. Mole fraction. Oh, yes. That's pretty easy to do, right? Mole fraction. Alright, so looking at these numbers real quick, I know Q gave me a little bit of a plan. What would you do? Divide by this, get a percentage, and then do what? All right, so very simple. Plug that in, get that number, multiply it out for the eight, uh, 8410. All right, great. Typical AP loving question. So obviously, you really ask me? No, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you want, as long as they match up. If you did atmosphere, divide 560 by 101.325, you'll get your answer. All right, anybody have the atmospheres? Number for atmospheres? Collecting gas over water, which we're going to need to do. All right, so what we're going to do is bubble in some gas into that water. All right, so you'll see this referred to quite often in questions. So what you're going to do is fill this all the way up with water. It's all the way filled with water. Once you bubble in the gas, the water level is going to drop. All right, and you're collecting the gas over water. Alright, so you fill in your container all the way up. Alright, from the reaction, gas is being collected. The reaction is complete. All the gas, the collected gas is going to be there with water vapor too. Sorry, I can't see that. Alright, uh, okay, so after the reaction is complete, we're going to raise or lower the collecting vessel so uh, water levels inside and out are the same. 
right? The water levels are even. And what it means is this. The pressure of the atmosphere, right, the atmospheric pressure would have to be given to you in the problem. All right, so make sure you write on that left side where it says pressure of the atmosphere. That has to be given to you in the problem. The pressure of the gas and the pressure of the water. So if you have to figure out the pressure of the water, of the gas, you're going to be subtracting the water from the atmospheric pressure to get the pressure of the gas. Another subtraction problem. Very, very common question to be asked. Something we'll have to do so you know how to do it. All right. That brings us up to this.